we're back, and uh, Shohei Otani is a criminal. Uh, quite. <laughs> Quite a switch. Uh, I didn't see this one coming. A lot of stories. I feel like, yeah, that makes sense. This one, and if anyone who's followed the show, all off season, I've kind of been talking about what's going on with the Dodgers. They're they're kind of criminal organization. Like they just let bad seed after bad seed come through these doors, and then guys played one game. Feds are knocking down the doors. As he's fled the country. Hmm. Makes you think. (laughs) It took one game in the season for a a fucking gambling scandal. One game. Like, not a week, not a month. One game for an entire gambling scandal. And, hey, I mean, I I, I just wonder how much money they, they bet on Anthony Rendon's unders yearly. That, that that's all I want to know here. Like, if we're gonna uncover this, this stuff, like, let's get down right to the nitty gritty. So, I was reading to pass and put this up. No, Tisha, uh, Tisha Thompson wrote this on ESPN. I know the Athletic has it too. Uh, they both came out pretty much simultaneously, which is very interesting. <laughs> but because a, a, a big coincidence, I'm sure. Well, it's like in the ESPN one, they said they talked to uh, Ipe for like 90 minutes like the other day. So this isn't like brand new information to people, you know what I mean? It's always interesting when like you see how serious news like this, they'll put in some legwork, probably like a week's worth of work. They're making calls, they're talking to the police, shit like that. Free agent signing, they're like, yeah, let me just tweet this out. I'll write an article later that no one's going to read. Like, (laughs) the way they deal with breaking news is very interesting. Yeah, the spoke 90 minutes to ESPN Tuesday night. So it's Wednesday night now, uh, during which Ipe uh, laid out his account in great detail. However, is ESPN, ESPN prepared to publish the story Wednesday? The spokesperson disavowed uh, Ipe's account and said Otani's lawyers would issue a statement. So uh, I saw someone point this out, like the way it should be talked about, and I don't disagree, is the story hadn't even come out yet, and Otani's camp was already trying to change the narrative. Like the story hadn't even hit the streets. Right, right. Like that's where we should lead off. The story changed before it was actually a story. Like, the whole story changed before like, we even knew about shit. And the ESPN, I haven't read the full athletic one. I read the full ESPN one. Goes in great detail about how close these guys are. And how they're more than just, like, work partners. Uh, they've up there, like, a brotherhood is how they describe it. It's a tough look. It's a tough look if if you're a nerd. For me, this kind of elevates him and my goat discussion like in the pantheon like when he's i look at all us. the rest well when i it's like when i look at jordan um and he's got that the picture with the sunglasses on when he does the the interview with ahmad rashad like in the, the peak of his gambling debt days like that's otani now like that's that's otani looking like the other blues brother like it said they he was betting on international soccer the nba and the nfl no baseball. They want it clear to everyone. No baseball was bet on. But I don't know, I don't know man. He he played for the Angels for how many years? I'm supposed to I'm supposed to believe that there was no like all right, Patrick Sandoval's pitching today. You know what? Let's crank the over, baby. Let's go. I'm supposed to believe that that wasn't a thing. The reason I don't believe that is because he was in 4.5 million dollar hole. Like if he was betting on the Angels, he would be He'd have more money than Okani's contract. I mean, you know to, to I mean? be fair, we have to consider odds. Betting against the Angels wasn't great odds. Like it wasn't favorable odds. Like you, you were just you, you were betting a whole bunch to win a little. At at that point, these quotes killed me. Obviously, uh, Otani wasn't happy about it, and he said he would help me out to make sure I never do this again. Which is classic, exactly how it works every time when you pay off someone's four point five million dollar debt. <laughs> Uh, he decided to pay it off for me. I want everyone to know Shohei had zero involvement 
uh, in betting. I want people to know I did not know this was illegal. I learned my lesson the hard way. I will never do sports betting again. The, 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 this, this is the part of the movie where he has the gun in his back while he's saying all this? Yeah. Well, it's big, like, uh, a lot of the questions... I'm getting a lot of questions about my Shohei Otani never bet on baseball t-shirt that could be answered <laughs> by the t-shirt. Like, and I don't like, I don't care, but it is the way pro sports like Scrooge McDuck dove into gambling without like, there was no, Oh, is the water cold? Let's ease into it. Like they mm-hmm. just right in the deep end, no flotation device. This is far from the last story we'll hear like this. Far from the last. Like, we haven't had a college scandal yet. Uh, we've had a couple, but they've all been college baseball. We haven't had a major, uh, like, uh, college football, like, fixing scandal or anything. Like, that's for sure. And I mean, we brushed aside. I forget who it was. I don't know if it was last week, two weeks ago. He... he outright said like there's bookies contacting him trying to fix games i can't remember which college it was, football well, player it, was. it was it was a vanderbilt quarterback which i <laughs> all due respect all due respect i can, like you're saying the odds on <laughs> angels games are bad yeah yeah v- vanderbilt. i mean he he cited other people that's the only reason i brought it up like he cited people from Alabama, Florida. I, I forget the colleges he named. So it, if it was yeah. just like, yeah, the bookies were trying to contact me, I'd be like, they're they're, they're just out out here contacting a Vanderbilt quarterback to fix games. They need right. you to fix games. Like y'all suck anyway. Like they, they didn't right. Yeah. Like I don't. I can't imagine they're favored often. So that's where it's like I don't know. A player props like he could throw more interceptions. I guess I don't. That one was like the source is a tough one to make a big deal out of. But uh, one of the more famous like college basketball fixing scandals had to do with Boston College. So stranger things have happened. Like strange things <laughs> happen all the time. Um, but this is wild. The, the one thing I find most interesting of all this, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the main story at hand, but Shohei's contract was basically written by Shohei to the point where he doesn't have an opt-out. He can opt-out whenever he deems necessary to opt-out. Like, he very much has the Dodgers by the balls. Ken Rosenthal on twelve thirteen said, The contract also states, If specific change in Dodger personnel, a player may opt out of contract at end of season, uh, the change occurs. Not known at present who this refers to. I believe it has to do with GM's front office, but I would love to know exactly how that's written, uh, like the legalese of it, because I'm sure there's a a big old loophole in there that's like, listen, you guys didn't really take the fall for my guy. I'm out of here. Like, it's, it's just one of those things, if I'm a Dodgers fan, like how long is he actually going to be here? Hey, man. If if he wants to take that route, the leaks are gonna start, and they, they're gonna they're gonna start pointing at what what Shohei's involvement was, assuming he had involvement. So we're gonna all of a sudden see, oh, Shohei was betting on the Colorado Buffaloes. We're gonna see shit like that like leak every day. If he says, okay, I'm gonna opt out because you hired my you fired my man's, then the Dodgers are gonna be, oh, really? That's what you want? That's how you want to play this? Okay, fine, bet. Let, let let's do it then. So you want to sling mud? We can sling mud. It's one of those things, though, like, if if the only way the Dodgers can say anything is by further incriminating themselves, they probably won't say anything. Until he opts out. Then, then it's just, no, I'm right, saying, well, even, even if he opts out, it's like, the Dodgers can say something, but then that means they were covering up for him, which is just as bad and going to get fair. them fucked, too. Fair. And the Dodgers of all teams, this is the, the funniest part. And one of the main reasons why I never gave a fuck what the Astros did. Other than your team, the Dodgers did more crying about the Astros than anybody. Literally anybody. They really can't afford to have scandals of any kind, whether it's cheating or anything. If people can start to make not a, a, a big leap of an assumption that they have employed a game fixer, 
Um, that, that's a pretty big uh, assertion that I'm sure Astro fans are already running with. You know, like who get who who can say otherwise at this point? Obviously, that's all alleged and not proven. But right. when a story like this comes out and this guy's again uh, self-described brotherhood best friend. And they're just kind of sharing hundreds of thousands of dollars to bet on sports. It's a tough look. And how are we supposed to believe that Shohei just wasn't involved? He was just giving the money over. Like, yeah, here, here's here's one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Do what you want with it. I don't think that's how this works personally. So, Astros fans are probably having the time of their life right now. Like, hey, For you sure. talked all that shit. And then I, you, you're you employing a gambler, and we don't even know what he was gambling on. And it took one game for this to be uncovered. One. Yeah. A federal federal authorities learned of Otani's wire payments in January. This is where, like, some some players, it, feel, it feels very Tiger Woods in this sense, where we know Tiger didn't have, like, a normal childhood. He was just kind of a robot program to be the best golfer of all time. Right. Shohei feels very much that way in the baseball sense. Like, no, you were put here to play baseball. The rest of the world, you kind of don't understand at all. Uh, because there's no other explanation to put your legal government name on these wire transfers for $500,000 <laughs> a pop. Like, that's <laughs> as dumb as it gets. And I don't consider, like, I, I view Shohei as like a savant. You know what I mean? Like a extremely intelligent person. But to be fair, I've never heard his take on anything other than baseball so that exactly he's a big dumb dumb outside of maybe because if he's putting his name on it either he's naive or dumb there's there's no no two ways about it because it's like hey you're not supposed i mean we we saw calvin really get a season for putting in bets on FanDuel or whatever he's doing it's like you have friends bro just just let them do it you have friends just let them do it or if if you're gonna do this at least don't put don't put it in fucking uh, a file with your name on it. Like, hey, I am sending 500k to, at, at on multiple different occasions to somebody. Just don't. So it's either he's naive or he's dumb. Maybe it's both. Who knows? After Otani agreed to pay the debts, Otani logged on to his own computer and sent the wire transfers under uh, Ipe's supervision and in installments over several months last year. They added loan to the description field in the transactions we had to add a description for the wire i think boyer told me just to put loan you had to put something asked why otani simply didn't give him the money instead of paying boyer's associate directly if they said otani didn't trust him with the money he didn't want me to gamble it away (laughs) unbelievable obviously this is my fault everything i've done i'm ready to face all the consequences this I mean, there's no one better to be facing consequences on uh, behest of uh, than the guy who just signed a $700 million contract. That's a beautiful guy to be the the fall guy for. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because if, if that man sees jail time at all, he going to be set up when it, whenever, he, whenever the fuck he gets out. He's not going to have to he, – he, he's not going to have to spend a, a, a dime of his on gambling anymore once, once he gets out. Like if there's a guy to take the fall for, it's Shohei Otani right now. That's the thing. I this is where I don't know. Like, I know gambling's. I mean, I don't know this anymore because it's so state to state. But I know gambling is illegal with like illegal books like this. Obviously, like that's something I very much understand. But I don't know. Like, is he going to federal prison for gambling, or is the book holder? Go the one going to prison and everyone else just has to like pay fines and shit. Great question. Not, we we don't have a lot of cases like this to go on, so like, <laughs> great question. I don't. I have no idea. Maybe maybe it is the bookie who's doing this. But I mean, he's the one do like doing the illegal shit. Yeah, and then yeah, he's the one who the like. That's the reason we know any of this. It's not like this guy just came clean. They right. did a sweep of his of the bookmaker's house. Uh, and that was in January when they, they did the sweep and found uh, Otani's name on there. And they were like, huh, wonder if this is the same guy. Uh, <laughs> it sure was. Uh, 
This is a great quote. I'm terrible at gambling. Never going to do it again. Never won any money. <laughs> sure. Sure thing, boss. So you were getting all them loans for what then? If you never won and you're terrible at this, what were you getting the loans for? I mean, well, maybe I, Shoei's that dumb, but... Yeah, I mean, I th- if this is like a family member, I, a lot of people would do the same thing in that situation. Like, genuinely. If, obviously not to that level, because not everyone else has 700 to throw around a couple half million dollar wire transfers every now and then. That's not how this works, but... Uh, if that's really your guy, I could see a lot of teams doing that for sure. True. Or uh, players, not teams, not teams. Uh, but yeah, this was a wild story that we're just at the very beginning of. Uh, Dodgers won game one of the season and immediately got hit with this shit. He, they said he addressed the team <laughs> as to what <laughs> what was about to unfold back in the States. If I'm him... You're already in that side of the world. Why not just, why come back to the States? Just go to Japan. (laughs) I'm all set. See you guys. Remember when you said, I I forget which episode you said, you know, we're not making a big enough deal of this Korea trip. Anything can happen to the Dodgers (laughs) between now and then, between uh, the the, the first two games and and the actual regular season starting. I didn't think you had this in mind, but... No, 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 no. This, it, this happened. I mean, mm. when you're right, you're right. Got to give you credit. Like, anything can happen. Who knows where, where it goes from there? Like, it ended up being very poignant. It's fucking screwy, man. You start, like, what is it? Browns, Eagles is kicking off in Brazil next year. Like, that's <laughs> anything could happen. You know, you get that week two bye coming off the Brazil <laughs> game. That's a long haul the rest of the season. <laughs> You got to go back to Florida for spring training, which is still insane. insane. Who knows what could happen? And then, well, the first not even not they didn't even let the series end first, and we had we got a whole gambling scandal. And the game itself, I mean, it it happened at four or five in the morning East Coast time. I saw plenty of Dodgers fans. It was even earlier for them staying up watching it. It was it was a weird game. Uh, I was at Cronenworth over at first. Ball just went right through his glove. That's a tough scene. That's as tough a scene as it can. <laughs> Bro, uh, Chris Russo was on TV talking about, you got to make that play. Like, oh, what did you want him to do exactly? Yeah, he did. Well, he did make the play. The ball went through his fucking mitt. Uh, what did you want him to do? Russo, people are, even the olds are getting sick of Russo. Um, Finally, it took long enough. Uh, he's like, he kind of invented the medium to a degree, like yelling. He invented that. Yeah. Um, for sure. I mean, he's had so many classic bits, but I, I was scrolling on Instagram. I saw him trying to convince Stephen A that Jason Tatum wasn't like a top 40 player. And I was like, I'm, I'm with the olds. Get him out of here. Top Get 40 him. player of all time. No, like now, nah, well, look, 40's a stretch, but he was like, oh, okay. He, Stephen he was, A had him in like his top, like six or something. And Russo just starts going down the list. And he got about three deep, and he was like, you wouldn't take him over and bead for a seven-game series. I was like, all right, hit the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm with the olds, man. Get him up out of here. Yeah, yeah. I've, had, yeah. I've heard enough. Understood. <laughs> understood. Nonsense. understood. So, yeah, the Dodgers, quite a long flight home. I wonder if they're going to be playing cards uh, on the plane or if, if they're going to take a break um, for any gambling-related activity. But, yeah, it's... And it's, listen, I, it's, I'm, I'm sure it's a part, it's not the biggest part of the story. The Red Sox fired their interpreter last year just because he was bad at his job. Like, and I called it out in the middle of last season. I was like, I don't think he's interpreting. I think he's just kind of making it up on the fly. Like, I don't think he's giving it his all on these. And then even uh, Yoshida came out. He was like, yeah, I wasn't getting full messages from the team. Like, I was, it was just kind of. That's, that's, that's insane. I, and they listen, just let that go the whole season? I, how would you, if you genuinely don't speak the other language, the, the interpreter fair, holds fair. a lot of power. You have no fucking idea fair. what's going back. Like, it's a very, you have to be an extremely trustworthy person to hold that job. Obviously, the gambling shit's a different part of it. But just <laughs> when things are going great, you have to, there's a lot of trust there. It's in, like, I speak one language, and barely I speak that one language. I can't imagine 
being the guy in the middle, especially like words have different meanings, inflection points, all of that. Like it, it's it's not an easy job at all. So I can imagine if, if they just get a new guy in there and show he doesn't vibe with them, or if it's the guy the Red Sox fired getting a second chance, like it, there could be genuine communication breakdowns, which is brutal for a team that's trying to get like the biggest unicorn we've ever seen back to pitching coming off of an injury. Like it's, it's a weird wrinkle to this story. That'll be like the 15th thing talked about in a couple of months, but it's a genuine thing. The Dodgers should be concerned about. Now, obviously there's plenty of people who can speak Japanese, but like I said, there was one employed last year who was just fucking winging it. So who knows? He was bullshitting his way through it. To both sides. He was like, yeah, <laughs> Yoshida, Yoshida said he doesn't really feel like getting fourth today, boss. Like, how do you know that's how what Yoshida really means? Right. It's a wild scene. It's There's a wild a lot. scene. We're, we're, we're going to find out a lot about this shit in the, in the coming weeks and all of that. Even though, like, uh, um, I saw people were like, oh, you know. MLB needs to investigate this and punish Shohei as necessary. Brother, Rob Manfred would rather light himself on fire than actually investigate this whole thing and punish Shohei accordingly if he is involved in any meaningful way. Stop it. All right. If if we see Shohei playing for, like, the Lakers next year for some unknown reason, uh, then we'll know that Manfred's got him on the – he's told him to take the Jordan year and a half playing a different sport. <laughs> Shohei goes send the facts. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah, back. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Hey, f- said he felt like pitching. He went down to practice, was getting <laughs> striking out yeah, Kike Hernandez. Striking repeatedly. out people left the right. He was like, oh, I yeah. feel it. I got it back, baby. I feel it. So, yeah, until that happens, it's, uh, I don't expect much to come out of it. But I do, I mean, it's still so new. It's still just getting turned on in so many states. Anything could happen. Like, genuine, and it happened, like, I don't know if it's to the NFL's credit, not necessarily the way I want to open this sentence, but they've had several people come out just gambling on everything, and they just suspend them and move on. Like, that seems to be, I don't know what I call it the best way, the best way I've seen so far. Like, they don't let it linger. You know what I mean? Jameson uh, Williams, uh, yeah, Jameson Williams, the receiver for yeah, the Lions. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he got hit with that, came back, and everyone just started talking about, yeah, he missed a lot of time last year because it's a calf. Like, wow, it's like, no he's really games. fast. Like, nobody <laughs> talked about it anymore because they were just, all right, man, take the three games off. And, I, I mean, put it this way. The NFL fan base as a whole, we've forgotten about way worse than gambling on some college drafts. We've forgotten about brushed aside way fucking worse. So a little gambling here and there. All right, man, take a couple of weeks off. Nobody cares. It's, it's, it's not that big a deal. Take a couple of weeks off. Come back. It'll be all right. There's so many people, too, just in talking to, like, the fan mind, so many fans already feel like people are cheating and, and that sports are rigged. I don't know what sport I could point to right now where people didn't think, like, the NBA had their referee issues. The NFL is just the NFL. And uh, baseball had the Astros scandal not long ago, uh, right after this. Like, baseball's going to stand scandal every decade. So if I, if yeah. there's any sport that's going to be leading the way in gambling scandals, it's going to be the MLB. I'd like to bet on that. I don't know that I can, <laughs> but I'd like to bet on the MLB having the most gambling scandals of this decade. And it's just the beginning, not just of this Shohei shit, but gambling scandals as a whole. Uh, because, yeah, the... The, it's it's weird that <clears throat> the interpreter would come out and be like, oh, it's for sure gambling. And now that they, the Shohei's camps just tacked on theft to make it seem like he's been victimized, but they haven't pointed to what the theft is, just that there is theft in the world. <laughs> like that, that theft is, a, is an abundance in the world. Uh, but there has been nothing specific to this where they've been like, oh yeah, this this money was stolen from him. Like Shohei was sitting at the laptop himself, like <laughs> typing in the typing in the wires. What's the routing number? Okay. Interesting. Yeah. 500 <laughs> large that way. Listen, man, I, the, the, the story as a whole, first of all, as we cited earlier, the fact that the story changed before it was even a story 
is the biggest sign that somebody is guilty of something. And I'm not talking sure. about just exchanging money because as dumb as that is, like, if he was just simply doing it so the other dude can gamble, I, I, I don't see how, why, why they'd be doing this kind of mental uh, fucking gymnastics to bend the story in that way if it was just simply, I'm giving a friend money to do sure. whatever it is that he does. Yeah, and I mean, that's where him transferring it directly to the bookie is a brutal look. Like, if he yeah, were transferring it to his pal, then it, then you could play it off a million different... Oh, I had no idea. I thought he was a drug addict. Like, you could say anything. But this being the way he was doing it, I, it's, it's a slippery pickle. I'll tell you what. It is a slippery goddamn pickle. And this is why I, I would like to shout at people who have been chirping the Giants, what a change a year can make. Because I was like the number one uh, pointer and laugher at the San Francisco Giants. Every offseason, they would come out and say, we're going to make all these signings. They'd get fucking nobody, and then they would just happen again. This offseason, they've been consistently signing the top free agents available, They've been getting them at a discount because the rest of the teams have just decided not to even try. But if yep. there were any team I could see an excuse for taking a year off, it would be someone in the NL West. You've got the Diamondbacks, who were in the World Series last year, are young, talented, and probably still going to be quite good. And then you've got the Dodgers, who have spent more money than God on elite, elite players all over the place when they already had elite players all over the place. If this were the offseason, the Giants were like, we're all set, we're just going to join the rest of the league and not sign anybody, it would have been super understandable. They've been pretty consistently throughout the offseason adding some of the elite guys. Now, I can question why they didn't just give Snell and Chapman longer deals, especially since they had uh, qualifying offer picks attached to them, and they can both kind of just opt out after the year, and now you've punted a bunch, a bunch of shit. Yep. But but where I don't even care about that is they're going for it. It feels very Houston Rockets during the Warriors run. Like, hey, we know what we're up against, but we're just going to keep trying because why? The, we've got this guy in his prime and he's really good. He's MVP caliber. Why would we punt on that? And they took those Warriors teams as far as they could go. And that's basketball. Basketball is a way more certain game. Yeah, they have more talent. They're going to win. Sure. Baseball, listen, you've got Blake Snell, Logan Webb at the top of your rotation. You've got Robbie Ray probably coming back around the All-Star break, or after that, rather. You roll into a playoff series with that, who knows what Jordan Hicks is going to give you at the very least. It's a horrifying weapon coming out of the bullpen. And then they've got Doval at the back end. They could beat anybody. And if we've seen any team kind of just win with pitching over the last 15 years, it's oh. goddamn Giants. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the Giants won three different championships, and we look back at those teams like, how the fuck did they manage to pull that off? And, like, the Diamondbacks made the World Series last year. They won, what, 84 regular season games or whatever it was? Something like that. Listen, I, I'm, ne I'm never going to be mad at somebody for trying to compete. The Giants have had a good offseason, and re realistically, it it gnaws at my soul that we gotta like give them props for just actually trying to win. But it, it you look at the half of the major league teams in the fucking sport, and they're actively not trying to win. Hence, why Blake Snell could go unsigned until March. And yes, blah blah blah, Boris this, Boris that. I get it, and I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to act like he didn't have a role here. Fine. But the fact of the matter is, we're talking about a two-time Cy Young Award winner that signed, what, the day before the season started? Or whatever Basically, it was? Basically, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's, yeah, the, the Giants do deserve credit for competing because a lot of other people don't want to. Jordan Montgomery is still fucking unsigned. The baseball season started. He's still unsigned. We're still doing this. So, yeah, they deserve credit for competing. And quite frankly, you, I mean, we touched on the point about, I mean, you touched on the point about um, losing draft picks this down to third. It's bullshit that that's even a thing. That, oh, you sign a player, you lose a draft pick. Bro, just give the team a draft pick. Nobody got to lose one. Just give the team a draft pick. Just put, tack it on the end of the fucking first round or fourth round or wherever the hell these picks go and call it a day. Like, you, you're actively saying, yeah, all right. Yeah, the NFL. Right. You're giving them an excuse to not sign people. And they don't need one. They, they, that's, they don't need one. They, they, have, they don't need an excuse to not spend money. But you're actively, oh. I can't give up my precious draft picks and international free agent money to sign insert player here. 
You're giving them an excuse for no fucking reason. Just tack, on, tack them on at the end of rounds and be done with it. I'm sure it's one of those nonsense, oh, it's to protect smaller markets so that when bigger oh, of course markets sign a player. Like, listen, Shohei is one of these guys. It's the same fucking market. <laughs> he didn't even move houses. He lives in the same it's yeah. the same commute to work. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I, it's, it's embarrassing. But even before letting Chapman and, and Snell fall into their laps, like, they got Lee relatively early. Um, they, they got Solaire in the middle of there. They got Hicks in the middle of there. They got Chapman about a month ago. It was like right, I want to say it was right around when spring training was getting underway. Chapman got there. Um, they're also bring, like Luciano, it's going to be his first full year. He's their top prospect, or at least top fielding prospect. Um, it, it's it's hard to knock what they've done here. Like, if they were in any other division, people would be like, oh, this is, they're, they're probably going to compete for first place. And obviously the Dodgers are the Dodgers, but I don't know. I like what the Giants have done. Um, they were kind of creative all off season. They played the market extremely well. Makes me think they could have waited on Lee and gotten him cheaper if they wanted to as well. Cause I don't know who's going to be spending that much on them, but listen, they got their, they got their guys. It's, it's, it's a good time to be a Giants fan, even though I know they're, they're always yelling at Farhan <laughs> do more. Yes. Yes, they are. They, they, they got quite a few good players. Like you can't you you can't really ask for a lot more, especially with, with a team where the big the the massive big fish free agents just ain't signing there. So they're just all right, fine. Okay, we can't get one big ticket guy. Okay, let's get five good ones. Well, it's like and Snell is a big ticket guy. You know what I mean? That got he him is. because the rest of the league. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's collusion or not because there was another story that broke. The players' union was trying to oust. A mm-hmm. guy under Tony Clark or supplanted Tony Clark. I didn't read that one in depth because uh, I don't care. Um, Same. But Boris came out on the side of the union rep, which was very peculiar given what's been going on with him and his guys. Like, I don't know. I've seen a couple of writers try and jump all over Boris. Like, safe. They got him. And it's like, he's been doing this my entire life. I feel like... This is the only off season he's ever lost. You know what I mean? Like he's mm-hmm. he's he's was he? It's like the Undertaker's record at WrestleMania. He's like twenty six and one. Like okay, I'm sure he's I'm sure he's real upset. Yeah, man. I mean, the just the I, I like what the Giants did. And also, to go back to what um, what we were talking about with their roster, Kyle Harrison is a really nice prospect for them. I, his command is a little bit spotty, but he has nasty, nasty strikeout stuff, and he pitches in that park, which obviously we know is a pitcher's park. I, I, I really, I, I hate to admit it because I don't really like the Giants, but I like what they did. I like what they did. What's there to hate about the Giants? I don't hate them. I just, I just don't care for them. I, I, I don't really have a good reason why. To be honest with you, I just don't, I just don't fuck with. Them. You, you, you've never, you've never seen somebody just. You don't fuck with them just for whatever, whatever it is, no, I, for whatever the reason. I just there's don't plenty of stuff it. I hate off JP. Like I get it. I very yeah. Much I just get don't it. fuck with the Giants. And, and, the, and Giants. the Buster Posey thing uh, didn't help. What Buster Posey thing? Oh, them well, changing the fucking the rules when he got his leg mangled. That one. Oh, the rule change. Yeah, fuck that shit. Like, I, I, bro, I watched Francisco Cervelli play baseball for my favorite team. That man had 28 concussions. Not, not a single rule was talked about being changed. The minute Buster Posey breaks his fucking leg, all of a sudden we change the rules. N- n- now we care about people's well-being. Now Listen, we care. You want to talk about the Yankees and rule changes. I think it's out-fucking-rages that the guy who gets to decide uh, suspensions and whatnot is coming out during Yankee spring training games, pulling pitchers off the mound. Like if you don't get the fuck out of my face, complaining about the goddamn rules when you've got the guy who decides the rules still managing the fucking team, like get out of my face. When it, when will that ever come into play? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. When will that bias ever <laughs> yeah. come into play? Like, is there bias there? Sure. The Yankees are a team that's on the up and up. Like there, there, there's nothing going scrappy on. Scrappy upstart New York Yankees. Yeah. <laughs> the Yankees are an up and up. The scrappy 
we play clean, hard baseball. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing to see here, as far as listen. I don't know if that's bullshit. true either. Giancarlo Stanton hit about seventeen thousand feet of home <laughs> runs today. I don't know if "clean's" the word we're going to be throwing him around. <laughs> Hey, John Carlos Stan hits missiles, man. That's what he does. I, he, he's lucky he's got a long history of that uh, because if if that were any other aging vet who was doing that, I don't give a fuck, spring training, off a tee, anything. Like, that's alarming based on what we've seen out of him, especially just this spring. I mean, he's been good this spring. Sure. He's been good this spring. I don't. I don't know. Why, I don't know why we're dragging John Carlos Stanton into this. Oh, uh, making the day after Tory makes a trip, uh, all of a sudden he starts jacking dingers all over the place. It's just interesting. That's all. I found it interesting. I don't. I don't, I don't know what you're trying to imply here, Coley. I'm not implying anything. I'm saying it outright. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're not saying it outright. You, 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 like you driving around the house, but you're not. You're not walking in. I'm just listen. It's I think it's interesting. Uh, the Shohei story came out today. Is all I'm gonna say. It's just like <laughs> they're trying to bury something else going on on the other coast. The Yankees are, are the Yankees are they play a, they, they are a clean organization that plays mm. good hard hard nosed baseball and occasionally hits the ball really far. Not you sent me a, a Yankees story today that I just genuinely wouldn't have seen. Um, <laughs> it's always very funny. Aaron Boone has already talked with Verdugo about how many chains he can wear around his neck. Bro. It's not a usual conversation for Boone to have, but Verdugo is the only only allowed one chain while on the field. You know, I'm just gonna I'm gonna contradict myself. Okay. I'm just, I'm just lead off with that. Get that thug off the field. Is that what you're gonna say? No, <laughs> no, 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 I would never. Um. I agree with Aaron Boone. Why? Because Alex Verdugo's not good enough to be walking around with seven fucking chains. Knock that shit off. If you've never hit 30 home runs this season, keep your one fucking chain and knock that shit off. Okay. Now that I got the the bad faith portion of it out of the way, the my real opinion, <laughs> what, what the fuck are we doing? What are we, what, are we, what are we doing? If he wears three chains, who is he hurting? Like, this is not a baseball issue. This is not like, oh, the chain might hit you in the face. This is none of that. This this is, like, what do you gain by telling this man to wear one chain and not four? What, 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 what is, what, who is he hurting? What, this is a victimless crime. Who, what is the crime here? He wears <laughs> four jaywalking. chains. So fucking <laughs> what? What, you, like, uh, John from Long Island is going to be upset? Like, is, is that the biggest problem here? And also, I love. To, I I would pay so much money to see Juan Soto be like, you know what? I'm coming out there with ten chains. Go ahead, tell me something. Go ahead. Juan Soto come out there with ten chains. What are they gonna tell him? Don't do that. I'm I'm looking at pictures of Verdugo. Like uh, picture day, he always comes in with about forty chains on, which I respect. Looking at like what he plays with. It's maybe two sometimes. Like it's typically just one chain, anyways. So I don't know. I they, don't know that they're the, the Yankees to just be had to go out and get in. Front, they, they had to get in front of this in case he had any ideas of wearing three or four chains on the field. Because God forbid he wears jewelry while he plays baseball. Or I don't even. I just don't understand what they're trying to prevent. There's no rule in the rule book. Like obviously, I have a little stupid ass facial hair rule. I've had it forever. There's no rule against wearing chains. What's next? You gonna tell Strowman not to wear a do rag? Is that next? Uh, probably, yeah. I mean, I would. Imagine, so. <laughs> I know you're kidding, but yeah. What's probably. next? Where does? I'm not even kidding. The where? Yeah. Where does it stop? Where does it stop? What? What are you trying to prevent? And on top of that, you mentioned that, and you would know better than me because you've watched him play for your favorite team for several years. He doesn't. He, he he's not even the guy who's going out there with four or five. As a matter of fact, who does? Who? Does? Not that we're talking about it. Who? Yeah. Who? Who does? It's so it looks like after his son was born, he added, I believe it was son. Like, mm-hmm. I know it was a child was born. I'm pretty sure it was son. Right. Uh, he added, like, one of those picture chains that have been hot in the streets for, like, four years now. Like, the circle one that just has the picture inside of it. He added one of those, but that's, like, a skinny rope. Uh, so he had two chains. Like, he literally just had two uh, for the majority of, like, the last couple of years. Before that, it was, like... 
the, most of the pictures I'm seeing at Google, Alex Verdugo chains. The majority of ones of him actually playing, he has one. Just one. Like, so this was not even an issue to talk about. Like, they, they are preemptively getting out in front of an issue that's not a fucking issue for no actual reason. Like, what... You felt the, the need to preemptively tell this man, don't wear more than one chain. When that's all he's really ever done, he's never really w- 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 uh, worn more than two. And if he wants to wear two chains, who gives a fuck, bro? If he wants to wear two chains, who cares? Who cares? Who is he hurting? He ain't hurting himself. Like, what, what did Dion say? You look good, you play good, you play good, they pay good. And etc. You know the rest. Mm-hmm. What, what's the problem? If he wants to wear two chains, what and, and go hit forty doubles? What's the problem? What's the issue? I read that shot. I nearly ruled my eyes out of my head, bro. Like we don't have to be this lame about. Every, well, I mean the Yankees kind of they do because that, that's that's their whole that's their brand. That's their thing. The Yankees are boring. It is what it is. Like I. I understand, and I know it's not something any New Yorker struggles with. You're kind of just born into your fandom uh, for, like, the entirety of the Northeast. It's not something you really pick and choose. But, like, the growing up, if I grew up in New York, I feel like it would be such a struggle, especially in the 90s. It's like, all right, I could, I could root for this team that literally wins every goddamn game. Or the cool one that has like guys on cocaine, and like I feel like I'd probably go with the cocaine team. And that that would just strictly on a organizational fun perspective, that wouldn't be a bad choice. The sure. Mets have always been more fun than the Yankees, for better or worse. So like obviously they have not <laughs> won for worse, for Typically worse, yeah, worse. for worse a lot because they have not won, and it's been a lot of lean years for the Mets. <clears throat> but like the Yankees just. The Yankees run themselves like a police organization. They do. That, that's what it is. They do. Like they do. I mean, they are. They're, it's a team full of cops. Like it's. All right. All right. We, we don't. We don't have to do this. Listen, you've had Brett Gardner in my face for most of my life. It's a team full of goddamn cops. It is what it is. Like, hey, man. Brett Gardner was one person. It's one person. It's just the Yankees don't uh, run around with a whole lot of cops. Brian right. McCann. Okay, and that's two people. Teixeira looked like a state trooper. He wasn't as big of a loser as the other two. He just kind of had that face. Um, that he did. Like, like he calls people boy. Like, that's the kind of face he had. Uh, <laughs> fair, fair. Like, longest fair, yard fair. defense fair. face. Like, that was, that was the kind of face he was running around with. Why can't I say it two-face? Yeah, like, uh, it's just not a very trustworthy organization by any stretch. Uh, so, yeah, th- these kind of conversations, yeah, the Stroman thing's for sure going to happen, like, no doubt. Um, I'm trying to think. Who else on that team? I mean, Soto should, like you said, should just walk out there with, like, the fucking Flavor Flav clock. Like, as obnoxious <laughs> a thing as possible. And just be like, do something. What are you going to tell me? Like, what are you going to... I'm going to have my 160 WRC Plus by the time the season's over. What the fuck are you going to tell me about what I'm wearing? Mind your business. I'm still waiting for a Soto-type player, because I understand it can't be bottom-of-the-lineup guy. Just show up with a beard. Like, wh- what are they going genuinely do? Everyone just kind of takes that rule and runs. Like, just, if you want a beard, wear it. You know, it's funny that they they actually... And I did not notice until last year. They suspended Don Madley behind that. <laughs> In 95, I want to say it was 95. Yeah, it was 95. They suspended him behind that. They were just like, all right, you, you can not play as long as you have it. You're, you choose. And that I think was, he must have sat out like three games. That was then. I don't know that they wouldn't win the PR battle now. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, I, I'm, I'm just saying we, 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 I'm just saying we have in our record that they did it. Uh, it mm-hmm. definitely would not work the same way. Now, especially if it's like a solo, not even a solo level type player. If it, and Alex Bregman, and I, I'm I'm not saying that derisively, but like he's considerably worse than Soto. That kind of player comes in and is like, all right, I'm wearing my beard. You're not gonna do nothing about it. They're, the Yankees are gonna lose that battle, for sure. They're gonna lose that battle because it's a I, fucking antiquated rule anyway. They're gonna lose the battle. They hold it throughout the minors, right? I, they I must. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, they, have, they yeah. must. There's I don't no way they're letting guys get with beards either. So yeah, yeah they, there's yeah. no way they're letting them run around with beards down there and then come up and that, like, right. that has to be organizational top to bottom. It's really stupid. It's it, among of all the reasons. Like it's just so easy to hate this team. I, I want to disagree, <laughs> and I can't. <laughs> I can't. It is. It really is. It is for reasons that don't even have shit to do with actual baseball. Like you don't even. You don't need. You don't need baseball reasons to hate the fucking Yankees. Just how they run themselves is is enough to hate them. But they also have won a lot. And I'm from the Bronx, so I root for the Yankees, man. Yeah, I mean, not lately, but yeah, they have won a lot historically. Uh, you, we, we, we really didn't need the not not lately part. That was unnecessary. We, well, we both know, the listeners know, the viewers know that they have not won a lot recently. You did not need to jab me like that. You, you didn't. Need but to it's do like that. we're talking about it. There's for sure free agents who don't go there because, like, Jorge Soler would never. And it's not like he's won one on anyone's board, but he would never. That's a guy who only like grows facial hair and wears beards. Like that's his whole thing. So like he would never like you take yourself out or, of the or you have to or you have to pay him a lot more in second place for him to do it. Sure, but even there, mm-hmm. like I think some guys, I think some guys would genuinely stink without being able to like if you can't be yourself at, at all, you're not you're probably not going to perform the same. It remains funny to me that Deion Sanders played for the Yankees. That will always be one of one of my favorite fun facts because it just, it doesn't mean he played for the Yankees. Ricky Henderson played for the Yankees. Ruben Sierra played for the Yankees. Ricky played for everybody, and Ruben but, Sierra true, all respect, but like not bro, the we, same as we, the first we two all know what Ricky was about. He played for the Yankees, like third person t- talking as Ricky Henderson, pimping home runs. Ricky Henderson played for the Yankees. Ruben Sierra also played for the Yankees. It's really funny that those three dudes in particular played for the Yankees, given what we know that they stand for, which is a lot of, they don't like characters. Dion, Dion wore one single gold chain for, as a Yankee. Yeah. That, that feels like he was talked to about that. I can't imagine. He may he was, well, I'm looking at him on the reds too. He only wore, looks like one there as well. I think he was just a one chain thing. guy at the moment. Let's see. Braves. Looking like one chain. Yeah, I think he was just rocking one chain uh, okay. in that Fair. era. But if the Yankees had, like, a, like no Jerry Curl rule, I don't know that Dion <laughs> would have been there. You know what I mean? <laughs> he definitely wouldn't go if they had no, uh, no Jerry yeah, Curl. He's like, I can't. I can't, I can't do, do that. that. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could fuck with the chains. Like, I don't need a beard. Uh, I need this Jerry Curl, though, man. That, that's not what we're going to do. I need I need my hair to be soaking wet at all times. <laughs> but yeah, I mean it it's not unlike the Patriots get that Yankee reputation and not anymore. Uh but the Belichick era Patriots got that reputation. And then like Randy Moss would be out there like and we think Ojo Senko would be out there. Now, Ojo Senko never had shit to celebrate on the Patriots, so we didn't, <laughs> yeah, we didn't get to see his antics. Yeah. Uh, but, like, we would have characters, and we would let them do their thing. If they were showing up and doing their work, Belichick really didn't give a fuck what, else, what other time you were on. He did not care. The Yankees kind of have some of that, but as long as it still fits within our box, you can do whatever you want. And, I mean, they chase a certain type. Like it's not like they change. I don't, the Patriots are just like, yo, if you could play, you could play, bro. We don't really, we don't really care that much about what you do as long as you come to work on Sundays and 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 work throughout the week. If you're willing to bust your ass throughout the week and you and you perform on Sundays, brother, you could do handstands in the end zone. You you could do whatever the fuck you want. The Yankees yeah. kind of they, they have a type, and yes, the Yankees also went out and got a Rod. The Yankees got right. Juan Soto. Like they they have had personalities, but. It, for the most part, those guys are just top of the league types. We're just like, all right, whatever, dude. Right. You wanted the When's, best players in the league. We don't give a fuck what you do. Right. That that's the they, that's the part uh, for them. Um, what? How? How long until the season before the first uh, fan caller is complaining about the Soto shuffle? <sighs> Two days tops. 
<laughs> two days. Two days. Man, I, I want to say one. I'll say two. Your two opening days. day. I want to say, like, bro, opening day, opening day, I think the game is at one by by five. And you're going to have them call it in, like, hey, man, what, what, Soto going to go, go 0 for 2 with two walks? They're going to be like, dude, we didn't get this guy to walk. What's yeah. this? This this shuffle bullshit. What is this? But yeah, I'll give it two days tops. I'm going to be talking okay. about that. I wouldn't be surprised no, they complain about it now. It sounds fun. I mean, it sounds like a ton of fun. Uh, well, complaining uh, about the, oh, complaining for about a generational oh. player and then saying he sucks. Oh god, it. Yeah, it's it, it's not. But God bless them. It won't be me. I'll be complaining about more meaningful stuff, like DJ Lemay you hitting first every fucking day. I'll complain about that instead. Yeah, and no, I've seen some people thrilled uh, with the Yankee li- uh, lineup projections, and I guess like have at it. The middle's great, no doubt. No one, no one's here to argue the middle of the lineup. Out, outside of that, and everything that happens around that, really not that scary. The thing with the Yankees is, I, I kind of feel like if you look around baseball, you're not going to find. You're not gonna, most teams are, are going to have like similar type of setups. Like you got sure. two or three really good hitters, and then the rest of it is kind of just like, all right, young dudes who haven't proven themselves, or old dudes who need to bounce back, or whatever it might be. So I'm not tripping on it, but um, I mean, the Yankees do have a lot of what ifs. Like right. Stanton's a what if, Rizzo's a what if, Lopez's a what if. They have a Austin Wells is a what if. They have a lot of what ifs in the lineup, and if two of them hit like they should, or we we hope they do. You're cooking with gas. And if they right. don't, then it might be a struggle. Yeah, it's like a team like the Phillies, I don't know if their lineup's necessarily better, but I know the highs can be higher just because they have so many streaky guys on that team. Oh, for like sure. When, when Castellanos and Schwarber are locked in, I'm all in on the Phillies. When they're not locked in, I would take the Yankees lineup. Like yeah. the Soto... The Soto Judge baseline alone, regardless of what the other seven motherfuckers are doing, doesn't matter as much. For the Phillies, Harper can do a ton for sure. Let's see what happens with Trey Turner. Like, let's is he just going to be good all year? Is he going to take the first half of the season off? We'll see. Braves are another team. Like, I, I would take the Braves, obviously. Uh, I don't think that's crazy. The Braves lineup is filthy. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> Braves lineup is filthy. I want to say Michael Harris was like their seventh best hitter last year. Braves lineup is right. silly. And he still had like an 8 10 OPS. Yes, or something bro. Like yeah, it's absurd. <laughs> yeah, the lineup, the lineup is absurd. Dodgers, obviously, we'll see what happens if Shohei is behind bars. Maybe not, but outside of that, I've got them. And then, like you said, team like the Reds, crazy young. Right. Orioles, too. And I, Orioles obviously proved more than the Reds last year, but they should be in a similar barrel when you're just looking at like young teams that could again just rake or will there be some stretches where it's like yeah they're still young they're still learning this shit so that's where and again, i mean you you look at the reds man they're going down like flies look sure. if Marte got suspended then mclean is we don't know what's going on we just know it's a shoulder and they're, they're being real real coy about what's actually going on like oh it might be right. something he could be out for a long time he could he could play open day. It's like all right can you just give us some kind of hint that's yeah. a lot. There's a lot of space between. Yeah, we'll see him. We'll see him next year, and yo, we can see him in a week. Right, a lot of space. Yeah, I still haven't ruled out Jonathan India just taking everybody out so he can get some playing time. I think that's still very much, uh, <laughs> very much. It's not a coincidence theory. that two dudes who directly impact his playing time got hurt. Um, I, I, I'm I'm gonna run, I'm run with that theory. I like that theory. I fuck with it. The uh, Wyatt Langford homered again today. I think he's got seven or eight. I can get this actual number. I, I, I swore I swore I saw seven. Yeah, I think it's seven. I think it's seven. Let's see. Wyatt Langford. Six! That's not right. Yeah. Five hours ago, it's his sixth home run. Six? Shit. They asked, they asked the Rangers GM, like, is Wyatt Langford going to make the opening day roster? And he's like, well, you know, Wyatt has done everything possible to make this decision tough. He's done everything he possibly could. Brother, that is not answering the question. It's a yes or no question. 
Well, it sounds like a no if that's how he's talking about it. Oh, it does, but it, 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 so he hasn't, he's done everything he can to make the roster, and then he just left it at that. It's like, well, is that a yes or no answer? So he has no question, sir. But the Rangers, regardless of what they do with Wyatt Langford, I would take their lineup. They're the reigning champs. Uh, and they, like, they're the reigning champs, but they also have plenty of young talent that has hit, and then Wyatt Langford's just kind of lurking uh, like an angry tiger at the zoo, like mm-hmm. just waiting to be uncaged. Yes. So, yeah, that's that's another team. But, yeah, to your larger point, there are plenty of other teams I'd look at as equal, only a handful. Like the Nationals, once James Wood's up, they clear the Yankees pretty easily. Uh, so that's really it. Pardon me? What do you mean? The Nationals? Once like James the Washington Wood's Washington Nationals? Up. Yeah, once Wood's up. Like Name what? five people in the current Washington Nationals lineup. What do you mean? I, I mean what I said. Name five people in the lineup currently. I mean, it's insulting to ask this, especially when it, my their current lineup has nothing to do with what I said. <laughs> so James Wood is just Barry Bonds then? Is that, that what we're going with? For everything I've seen, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he is. All right. If that's the case, then yeah, you're right. Let's see. They've got Kiebert, they've got C.J. Abrams, they've got, is Carter Keeboom still there? I shouldn't have burned that one so early. <laughs> um, I, I, I highly doubt he's going to be in the opening day lineup, but I'll give it to you anyway. Listen, <laughs> if he's there, if he's on the fucking 40, man, I'm, I'm taking it. Okay, fair, touche. Who else? Uh, I mean, they got Harper, Zimmerman, you know the fellas, Rendon at third. <laughs> Trey Turner. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know they waived Jeter. Oh, I mean, they do have a, a ton. Of, they, got, they have a weird amount of former Red Sox. Uh, like, Chavis is on this team. Uh, I can name more pitchers than lineup guys, which is brutal. I don't hate the Nationals pitching staff. Like, I don't think it's going to be the best in the league, but I don't hate their pitching staff. Uh, they have, I mean, they have, what, Josiah Gray? I don't, I, they have Josiah Gray. They have... Mackenzie Gore. Mackenzie Gore. Um, and then they have... Um, fuck, they have someone getting... They've got another young guy. I don't know why I'm blanking on who it is. What, Cade they've Cavalli? Still got stro- huh? Cade Cavalli? Maybe. I don't know why I'm blanking on... The, I, was, I was looking at their lineup, or their roster last night, and I was like, that's a decent three. Corbin and Strasburg, they still forced to be on this team for some reason. Uh, <laughs> Strasburg retired, did he not? They haven't allowed him to retire. <laughs> okay. They're, they, they, he's still on their 40. It's, it's been this weird underlying thing. If it were happening on any other team, it'd be a much bigger story. Obviously, it's the Nationals. No one gives that much of a fuck. Right. They're... I believe the reason they're doing it is they can then argue they don't have to pay out the rest of his deal if he doesn't report. Like they're they what? they they like have not they've like no, knocked him down for not reporting to spring training. That's this that's madness. How has this not been so lightly reported? I mean I, mean, I know it's the nationals. It's the nationals, but like I. Wow, I'm just finding out. I'm just finding out about that. That's crazy. Let me see. I think Passon wrote about it. No, he didn't. He's wildly unhelpful. I'm I'm so happy they just broke Twitter. <laughs> like I I search it and there's just a bunch of bots that just tweet Steven Strasburg also known. Yo Steven man, the Strasburg. bots are going. Yo, the bots have been going it's ham a on Twitter picture. for the longest now. The Lincoln bio folks have been going hammer. Oh, they're Twitter. having a great time. They're having a wonderful time. It doesn't matter what tweet 
the the answer it does not matter a lick. They are just they they are they are shooting shots. Um, so this is from the Washington Post from last month. Uh, the Nationals say they want Strasburg in camp, uh, if only to help with young pitchers and be used as a sounding board. Instead, he's at home. What gives? We're having conversations with him, General Manager Mike Rizzo said. I think it's going to end up where we want it to end up. And, you know, we're not going to say much more about that because we don't want it to be a distraction. (laughs) In a baseball sense, Strasburg is not a distraction. No one is holding a spot in the rotation for him. His career is over. To the point in which the club approached him last year about announcing he could no longer pitch. Team officials, led by owner Mark Lerner, wanted wanted to honor him with a ceremony. He was the first pick of the 09 draft. Da, 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 da. Um, from there, it got messy. No one is arguing that Strasburg won't get every last dime in that contract, a contract under which he made the last eight starts of his career, totaling 31 in the third innings. Uh, baseball contracts are guaranteed, so there's that. But the language and the logistics matter. The Nationals and Strasburg haven't been able to agree on the latter. Uh, first, the language is unlikely Strasburg will use the word retire. Uh, um, but he didn't retire. This, so when Prince Fielder underwent two neck surgeries that left him unable to play, he held a tearful news uh, conference announcing that. But he didn't retire because retired players can't cash the remaining checks. And Fielder's deal didn't end until 2020. I had no idea it went that long. Wow. What, when, when did Fielder retire? Huh? 16. When, Damn. Which was also later than I would have guessed. Uh, Same. What the Nationals want is some sort of contribution from Strasburg as long as he's under contract, which is through 26. That could come in the form of a trip to spring training. Uh, Rizzo opened camp by saying, I expect him to be here. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a weird thing. It seems like they want to talk to him so that I don't think his I don't think much of the money, if any of it's deferred. So I think they want him to basically restructure it because, yeah, he hasn't retired. Like he's he's just like I my my arm does not work anymore. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> like it won us a World Series. I think we're all fine with this. But I don't remember hearing him showing up to spring training you know what i mean i don't remember that happening man i i am forgetting which football player did this but like they were they they were holding out they they didn't get what they wanted then they came to camp and just came up came in and just started kicking the ball around it was a wide receiver if i'm not mistaken they just started kicking the ball around and doing absolutely nothing to help to to contribute to anything football related that's right. what strasburg should do all right you want me at camp all right but i'm gonna come in I'm 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 gonna I'm throw these baseballs left-handed all over the place. I'm gonna give bad advice, and then we're gonna see how much you want me around. Then we're gonna see how much you want me around at that point. Yeah, I mean, I think he definitely made the better calls. And I again, I haven't seen anything that said he did show up. He may have, um, but that was the most I've read about it. And that was the end of about a month ago's worth of news. It's been very lightly reported. It's a very awkward situation. Very. I don't know why the Nationals are dragging their feet over it. Like, they won the World Series, and then they kind of gutted the team. I don't really feel bad for them. And, I mean, he he's done. Like, it's three years left on his deal. Like, him coming to camp and giving tips for two days, I, I mean, is it, could that be useful? Yes, I'm not arguing that. Fine. But like you're holding his feet to the fire for this for, for what? Just pay it. Like he he gave he helped bring you. He was World Series MVP, was he not? Yeah, he was. He he won you a title. He helped win you a title. He won World Series MVP. Just let that man go in peace. Yeah, I I think it's, I think they want him in a room so that they can negotiate a different contract so that they don't have to pay him out over these next three years, but over like the next twenty. And I think he's like. My you, my check can come on the first, thanks. And I they can't say that. <laughs> Good. Good. They Fuck can't that. say that out like he can say that. I don't think they can legally be like, Yeah, we need him here to force him into a room to sign a different contract with his good arm. Like I don't think they can say that out loud, but that's 
nothing else they're saying really makes a ton of sense. Good. He should tell them to, to, to stick it. So, good. Oh, yeah. I mean, that baseball doesn't get a lot of guys people heard of well before the MLB making their debut. Strasburg hit the scene like goddamn dynamite. He did. That was a massive, massive deal when he hit the, when he hit the scene. And I remember his first start was against the Pirates, if I'm not mistaken. Thirteen. I remember the thirteen strikeouts. I think it was the Pirates, but I just remember it thirteen Ks and it, everyone being he, like, "Fuck he, yeah!" He when he came in the league, like that was what they looked like, like an ace starting pitcher with ace hype coming in and delivering on that shit. That's what you look. That's what it looks like. And I apologize. It was fourteen strikeouts. Um, yeah, over no seven. short change, Steve. 14, 8, 10, 9. That was his first month in the bigs. He was what they look like, man. Yeah, he was different. He was different. It was rocky. It wasn't the smoothest career, obviously, but he got that World Series. 3-2 ERA career. 32 war. But an all-out World performance Series MVP. in 19. Yeah, I mean, just 5-0 and in the playoffs that year. One game with no decision. They still won 7-3. Like, he didn't pitch poorly in that game at all. He went six, gave up three to the Dodgers uh, in a game. What game was that? I was going to say what game it was. Game five. Uh, just quick 7-3. Like, he was just money. Nine total earned runs over six starts in that playoff run. Like, just shoving. Or I guess first... First appearance was in relief. That's peculiar. That's... Maybe maybe the wild card game? That's like, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. All hands on deck, understood. They are, but it's just weird to see that that's one of the six, or one of the five wins was in yeah, relief. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, I want to say that yeah. was against the Brewers, right? Yeah. I remember. Soto had the the big RBI, uh, the big fucking bases clearing single slash bases uh, bases clearing error. Yeah, I remember that. Trent Grisham really fucked that up, and they got traded like a week later. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Yes, yeah, shoved against the Dodgers. 12, 12 innings over two starts, four earned runs. St. Louis just had no remorse for them. Seven innings, twelve days, no runs. And World Series against Houston, 14 innings, four earned runs. Kind of wasn't too concerned. He was a stud. It's a, sh- it's a shame uh, his body gave gave up on him, but he was a stud. Yeah, I mean, even he had played in the postseason two other times, and he was nails then, too. Uh, played against the Giants in 14, a World Series winning team. He got the loss, but he only gave up one run. You know what I mean? Like, he five innings, only two strikeouts, but one one earned run, 17 they get to the playoffs, zero earned runs over two starts against the Cubs, and that was when the Cubs were humming. Yeah. Yeah, he was, uh, he just kind of showed up. It's one of those things, if he'd played for a different franchise, if... Like, he was just constantly in the playoffs. Maybe his arm falls off sooner. You know what I mean? There's no way to know why that happened necessarily. But when he got to the postseason, he'll never get the, the title of, like, a dominant postseason pitcher because it's nine yeah, the same appearances. Point. You know what I mean? It's just not nearly enough. But a hell of a nine. Just an unbelievable nine that he went he out there with. count. Didn't think we'd talk about the Nationals today, but we did. For everyone who said we wouldn't do it, we fucking did it. Uh, yeah, and then that might be the last time we talk about them this year. So enjoy it, basket. For sure. Unless James Wood <laughs> makes an appearance, uh, uh, I can't imagine that. Mackenzie Gore might do something cool. Uh, I don't think Lane Thomas is getting talked about. No offense to him, I just don't think it's happening. Um, <laughs> so yeah, big, big Mackenzie Gore hours or James Wood. Other than that, we'll see you next year, uh, Nationals. But yeah, we'll be back next week. Regular season. It well, it's technically here. It is here, but it's not. Uh, Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. 
for real regular season in this goddamn country will be back. <laughs>